are you? What do you mean? But I'm you. But from the future. What? Why, why are you here? And how did you even get here? Why are you wearing sunglasses? It's really bright when you time travel. You wouldn't understand. But the thing is, you're typing on all these old school keyboards for your YouTube channel. It's making my shoulders and my wrists hurt. So, you know I don't like going to the doctor, right? I had to invent the time machine to come over here to give you something. To help you out. Or help me out? Help us out? Trust me. Or you. You'll thank me later. Or you later. Whatever. My job is done here. Wait, wait, wait. Before you leave. I got a quick question for you. Does my YouTube channel get like bigger? Um, like how many subscribers do you have? Or do I have? Or do you have? Hmm. You're about to turn 45. 45 million? Nope. 45,000. Wait. What? How far from the future did you even come from? Uh, one week from today. I'm leaving. So, the thing the future Scott left me in that black box is this. And yes, this is a keyboard. And judging by how it looks, how it lights up, and just how crazy it is, really looks like it can be an input device from the future. But this, it's available now, and it's known as a Digma Rays. Digma Rays? That's been around for a while. Why am I looking at this now? Well, the Digma Rays has been out for over a year, but not many people actually used it with the tending kit. The newer tending kit takes the split Digma Rays and turns it into this crazy ergo split keyboard that you see right here. And yes, the Digma Rays is not cheap. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Just the keyboard itself is around 320 bucks, and with the tenting kit and everything, you're looking at a cool 400 bucks. That is a pretty hefty price for a 60% keyboard. But why did I go and get one of these when I already have like 34 keyboards? Well, like what the future Scott said, doing this channel and just using keyboards for like 14 to 16 hours a day, my shoulders, neck, and wrists really did start to hurt. Hence, why you also saw my Theragun in a previous video as well. So, I decided to check out an Ergo keyboard to see if it'll help me with my day-to-day -day use. And you know what? Using an Ergo split like this actually changes the way you sit and type. And while not for every use case, but for the typical day-to-day -day activities, the Ergo split keyboard did help to ease some tension. And I could tell you I'm not affiliated with Digma or get paid in any way if anyone decides to buy this thing. So this is just my take on it. Plus, I think it looks pretty cool. So, let's take a quick look at the carrying case. It's a nice and high quality case that pretty much was custom made for this specific keyboard. I mean, given the shape, you have to, right? Inside, you'll obviously find the rays. In this case, uh, I have the all black version. Plus, you get this little neuron splitter that helps you connect both sides. On the opposite end of the carrying case is this little compartment with all of the USB cables and whatnot you need. Probably one of the nicest cases I actually have seen. But, you know, you did pay for this, so. And yes, if you want to use a raise as a standard 60% keyboard, you can do that too. Just connect both sides into this little metal sleeve and essentially, this is a standard keyboard with a wrist rest attached. Well, almost. The one standout thing about the 60% is that it also has a lot more keys than a standard 60%, as in these keys. So what do these do? I'll tell you what they do. They're actually layer keys, kind of like the ortholinear that I struggled with before. The left and right layer keys allows you to access an upper and a lower layer with extra functions and keys with ease. This did come in handy for me because I do use Excel quite a bit and I do need the arrows and all the necessary modifiers so it was good for me. Plus, the Rays has a programming software that allows you to change the key maps, do macros, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So, the Digma Rays comes as a fully built keyboard. This means it comes with the keyboard, the switches, the caps, and everything that you need to pretty much run this out of the box. Given all the RGB lighting and all, the keycaps are OEM profile double shot PBT with Shine Through Legends. They're semi-thick and okay, but I feel like not up to the same levels as some of the higher and thicker PBT caps you could buy in the aftermarket. Plus, the Digma comes in a slew of different switch options as well. I decided to go with the Kale Speed Bronze switches. You might be wondering, what is a speed bronze switch? 
It's essentially a short travel version of the box white clickies with the click bars. I really like the box whites and the box jades, so I decided to go with these. They're similar, but not quite the same. The key actuates before the click, so it does seem a little odd sometimes, but you know, you do get used to it. You can also get the raise with other KO speed switches, uh, as well as some of the few cherry and silent options as well. But honestly, there are so many better switches out there that I hope Digma will upgrade these to something else in the future. Like even the Gateron Pro series, yellows or reds, they're just much better switches than what they're offering now. The little switches below are actually low profile KL chalk switches for better or worse. Like everything else these days, the Digma also comes with the hot swap PCB, but in the north facing orientation for the RGB to shine through. And finally, the Raze does come with plate mount stabilizers, which are cherry and have absolutely no lube whatsoever on them. Plus, they're a bit fiddly. But for me, I rather would have a dry stab versus a poorly lubed one, because I could always holy mod it when it's dry, and I'd have to clean all that stuff out for the band-aid to actually stick. And I could also band-aid the cutout to make this overall fit tighter. Overall, the construction of the rays is pretty solid. It's aluminum all around, and even the lower surface is also made of aluminum as well. So it definitely feels premium. And when you do order the rays, you also get this little box. They call it the enhancement kit. It has some other switches in here as well as a puller, uh, some few keycaps, a bunch of silencing rings if you do want to use it. But honestly, I tried all the different switches in there, and as much as weird the KL speed bronzes are i feel like it's probably better than some of the other ones in there so i wasn't you know i wasn't too sad you probably figured it out by now but the tenting kit is actually separate it's a separate part and you have to buy and install it but before we do that why don't we take a look inside the digma rays before we go ahead and just kind of put all that stuff together when you tear the digma apart you can see the standard ko hot swap sockets right here then you see the crazy lowercase with all of these crazy light diffusers and this is actually what makes the edges glow so brightly. Plus the million LED lights in the center cluster of the PCB, that does help for that Tron effect as well. So well, let's install the tending kit now and take a look to see how this changes the overall rays. With the tenting kit added, the rays takes a completely different look. It just gets more interesting. The Tendi Kit allows for like four different angle adjustments in the front and back separately, so technically you can adjust the front and back completely different, and you could go for like a weird slope or angle here as well. In addition, you can also do one side higher than the other if you do have like a weird typing style or if this is what's more, more comfortable for you, right? I mean, you bought this because you're looking for comfort, so no one's gonna judge you how you use this thing. Even with the Tendin Kit, if you want to combine the two sides, you can. It just works like a standard keyboard, it's just a little bit more elevated. One thing to mention though, is if you do add the Tenting Kit to the Digma Rays, it will no longer fit into the travel case, so that's a bummer. Now that you know what this is all about, what does this thing sound like with the KO Clickies? Let's check it out. It's not a bad experience. Like the box whites, the click action is fairly light and crisp. Plus, the clickies do add a bunch of crunchy noise, so it also hides some of the rattling from the stabilizers as best as it can as well. I can just use it like this and call it a day, but then this wouldn't be keyboard, right? So, I did try this with linear ink blacks, but I did notice immediately that the Digma Rays being a, a little small and tented and all, it's a pretty quiet keyboard. There just isn't a big resonance chamber below to amplify the noise that much. So me being all annoying and obnoxious, I decided to throw on one of the loudest and clackiest tactiles I have, the Azure Dragons. Plus the color of the Azure Dragons do match the Tron highlighting of the case, so I felt like it was a good fit. Then given the stock caps are a bit thin, I also upgraded this with the Mistel PBT Double Shot caps in OEM profile. I feel like these little subtle upgrades actually made the rays look a little bit more professional and I really do like how this looks now. So let's take this for a spin now and see how this sounds.
As expected, it's definitely clacky, haha, <laughs> but not in a bad way. It has a very nice and satisfying snap, and overall I also enjoyed it like this. But you know what, at the end of the day, I may actually end up trying to lube and film the clickies and go back to those in the future. So after using this for a few weeks now, what is my thought? What changed for me? And what is a split ergo all about? As mentioned before, the first thing I noticed is that the split does help put my hands in a more natural position. In addition, I did also notice that it was the most comfortable when the digma raise was closer to my body and the split actually a bit wider than usual. This way, I felt like I was just kind of sitting at a desk with my hands relaxed at the edges and I really didn't have to strain forward at all. So does that mean that I'm going to forego all of my other keyboards and just stick with this one split ergo keyboard? No. But there are those days when a long day of typing really does put a strain on my body. Those are the days when this Digma raise will come out and save the day. So, and plus it's $400, I better use the heck out of it.